Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University, and today's show is going to be talking about how the rumen works to digest different types of feedstuffs. My guest, Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who's a professor and feedlot extension specialist for the state of Kansas. Join me here after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Dr. Reinhardt, welcome to Doc Talk. It's great to be here. Folks, Dr. Chris Reinhardt. He is a professor and he is our feedlot extension specialist here for the state of Kansas. He's over in animal science and industries, and we are uh, going to talk about how the rumen works. And I think most of you understand what a ruminant animal is. It's you know, a cow or a goat, and, and but understanding how that rumen works, Dr. Reinhardt's a ruminant nutritionist, so talk to me a little bit about what the rumen is and, and just in general. Well, simply put, the rumen is a huge fermentation vat. It's made up of the four chambers, the rumen, reticulum, abomasum, and omasum, and they all have separate functions, but the one we really care about is the rumen. The rumen is where all of that fermentation happens. So when we have the rumen, and it's large, I mean, especially in some of these whole brood cows and, and dairy cows, and you can hold a lot of feed and, and a lot of, so kind of talk to me then about, you know, what are the, the general, what are some of the different things going on? You say fermentation, so I assume that means microbial fermentation. Exactly. That's what it's all about. That that cow was made to eat things we could never eat and survive on because it's full of bacteria, protozoa, and fungi. And those are the, the critters that are actually doing all the work. Right. So we feed the microbes first, and then the microbes, the byproducts of, of microbial fermentation are what the, the cow lives on. Exactly. Without those microbes, that cow would starve to death. And so thinking in general so what kind of talk to me a little bit different between the the purposes or roles uh, or sizes or differences between bacteria protozoa and, and fungi relatively speaking the protozoa are really really big compared to the bacteria but they're pretty small in number compared to the bacteria okay and and bacteria what are some of the common species that we're going to be talking about then and I think it's important for people to understand these aren't uh, species of bacteria or protozoa or fungi that cause infection. These are good bacteria, kind of like when you see the acidophilus commercials and, and lactobacillus commercials. This is a whole rumen vat full of these good bacteria. I probably wouldn't want to drink a glass full of them. <laughs> no, but... But they sure do the cow a lot of good. Right, but they aren't causing infections. Exactly. They are there, and, and they're there almost from birth. Uh, as soon as that calf is exposed to the environment, starts licking itself, licking its mother, suckling, etc., they're taking in bacteria from the world, and those bacteria begin to colonize in the rumen. Okay. Uh, it, generally speaking, what are some of the, you know, when, I, when a cow ingests something, how long is it going to take for the bacteria to digest it? 
That is a really good question, and it totally depends on the quality of that feedstuff. If it's a bite of corn, it takes a matter of an hour to an hour and a half before there's some substantial fermentation going on. If it's a bite of corn stalks, it could be hours and hours before that feed is, is mostly processed. So understanding that the rumen is a fermentation vat, that it has different types of good microbes such as bacteria, protozoa, and fungi, and also understanding that there are differences in the way that it can digest due to the quality of the feedstuff is vitally important. When we come back, we're going to work with Dr. Reinhardt and we're going to discuss the difference between soluble carbohydrates and structural carbohydrates in the rumen and digestion more after these messages. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Lindsay Hetrick grew up in Burnville, Pennsylvania on her family's dairy farm and was under the influence of her dad, uncle, and grandfather. As she was given more responsibility, she developed a particular interest in the transition cows, which led to a career focused on animal health. After graduation, Lindsay plans on returning to a dairy practice in Pennsylvania. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here, and I want you to join us in Kearney, Nebraska on May 11th for a stockmanship clinic. We're going to talk about how to work cattle in teams. We're going to talk about cattle handling techniques and much more. Experts from across the country are going to be there. Dr. Tom Knopfsinger, Kurt Pate, Ted Howard, Kip Lugasavage, myself, many more are going to be there to work with you on this clinic. Go to packdvms.com to get the agenda and to register. Parasites will lose you more money than any other disease out there besides infertility. So, you know, parasites is something that we have to control and that's what Vet Gun does for us. It's tough out there on a the ranch, but with the ease of the Vet Gun, it's a one man operation. And whenever you can get one thing to work out great throughout that day, it just makes my life a little easier. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who's my friend and colleague from the Department of Animal Science and Industries and he is our state feedlot extension specialist and a ruminant nutritionist. And, and so what we're talking about today is how the rumen works within the cow. That fermentation vat that's full of bacteria and protozoa that is digesting the hay, digesting the starch to give the byproducts so that the cow can, can live off of those. And, and let's talk about digestion or rumen digestibility of, we have soluble carbohydrates and structural carbohydrates and kind of talk to me what the difference is between those two. Soluble carbohydrates, just like the name implies, they're very digestible, very soluble, full of starch and sugars and things of that nature. Structural carbohydrates, just like the name implies, they're there to hold the plant vertical and they're very poorly digestible. So give me some examples of each. The, the ultimate example on the soluble side would be grain that we use for we can eat uh, monogastrics, pigs, chickens, but cows and feedlot cattle do very well. The structural carbohydrates would be corn stalks, wheat straw, et cetera, anything that's designed to hold a plant vertical. Okay, and so when we start to think about this, the difference in, in the two main substrates as far as, because both of them uh, have copious amounts of, of glucose, and so, when we think about those, the difference between 
glucose in a structural carbohydrate versus glucose in a, in a soluble carbohydrate is what? It's how those individual glucose units are linked together. And one, like the starch, they have the alpha 1,4 and the structural have the beta 1,4. You think that little, two little words makes a difference. Double, triple, quadruples the energy availability of that feedstuff. Exactly, again, with the alpha 1,4, you and I can, can live on grain, but with the beta, we would starve to death. We, as humans, do not have the enzymes to digest cellulose, the structural carbohydrates. So we can't go out and eat hay and survive. Nor does the cow, actually. It's the bacteria and protozoa that do rumen. have, in the rumen, that have that enzyme necessary to break down that beta linkage. And horses don't have a rumen, but they have the hindgut, kind of like rabbits and, and horses have the hindgut fermentation. So they have a fermentation vat, too, full of microbes that are breaking down those, those linkages. It's just that theirs are located in a different spot of the anatomy. Exact, exact same function, just a different part of the animal. When we think about, you know, structural carbohydrates versus soluble, um, the main difference within the rumen is, is the byproducts given off? Right, the, the byproducts and then the, the, the rate that those things are broken down. Right, and as we mentioned in the earlier, soluble, you can have a cow eat corn and with an hour or two you have peak in fermentation. Exactly. And, and then on the far end, you've got corn stalks or wheat straw that might take a day and a half. Yep. So, understanding soluble carbohydrates, structural carbohydrates, things that, that are hay, roughages versus grains is important when you understand ruminant nutrition and how they break down. When we come back, we're going to talk about different types of protein sources and what happens when those hit the rumen. You're watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. I'm Dr. Kip Lukasevich with Production Animal Consultation. Today's BQA Tip of the Day is proper storage of your syringes. With our processing syringes, one of the, the common things that we find is that the syringes are hanging on the wall uh, where sometimes the, the, the area can be dust filled and, and dirty. So the best place to actually store syringes is either in the freezer your vaccine syringes is either in the freezer or in the refrigerator. Uh, the reason for that is, is that there's nothing that grows in a freezer. It's, it's dust-free environment. No bacteria and no mold will grow at that temperature. In a refrigerator, the, the, there can be molds that do grow. And so if we're using automatic refill syringes, just make sure that you change the tubing on those syringes at least on a weekly basis so that no mold buildup or residues uh, form in there that will harm your vaccines when you're processing. And that is the tip of the day. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living obviously, but it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, uh, and, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. 
Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Beef producers asked for it, and the wait is over. Enroflox 100 Enrofloxacin from Norbrook, now approved for single-dose treatment and control of bovine respiratory disease. With the same active ingredient and dosing regimen as Batril 100 in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Choose Enrofloxacin 100 when looking for an injectable antimicrobial solution to treat and control BRD. Observe label directions and withdrawal times. See product labeling for full product information, including warnings and precautions. Consult your veterinarian to see if Enrofloxacin 100 is right for your cattle. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Reinhardt. We're at Kansas State University, and Dr. Reinhardt is from the Department of Animal Science and Industries, where he is the feedlot extension specialist for the state of Kansas and beyond, ruminant nutritionist extraordinaire, Dr. Chris Reinhardt. Glad to have you on the show. And we've talked about different things with rumen digestion, and I don't think people really understand how dynamic that rumen system is, but when a cow can go out and eat grass, and, and then a storm comes and they can go bed down for, for three or four days before they have to go back out. It's kind of like the evolution of being able to live on the prairie and withstand long periods of time because they have that continuous digestion creating nutrients from the, the microbes. Um, and now we're gonna talk about crude protein. Crude protein, we have three main sources, right? The soluble, which we'd normally find in urea. The degradable is, a lot of people understand soybean meal, cottonseed meal, things of that nature, very degradable protein in the rumen. And then there's bypass sources of protein that really we mean escape. They go into the rumen, but they're not broken down, and we call them undegradable protein sources. Right, so urea is 100% solubilized in the rumen almost instantaneously. Right, and, and it's another one of those things that without the microbes, we don't, we don't use. Exactly, that cow cannot utilize urea by herself. Those microbes take the nitrogen from the urea, bind it with the carbon, and they make actual good quality protein. Right, as microbial crude protein, exactly. just the, 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 the population of microbes exploding in microbial crude protein synthesis. The other thing that will happen is that ammonia that's not utilized will go across the rumen wall, go to the liver, slap together and we have circulating urea again. Exactly and that's another really critical function. You talk about that cow surviving on a hillside, she's cycling back any nitrogen that she doesn't, that doesn't get bound up as protein, she gets a second chance at and that's, that's another function that's allowed her to survive all these years. Absolutely. And so then when we move away from the non-protein nitrogen sources and urea, the one urea rule that Dr. Preston always taught me was never feed more than 1% of diet dry matter as urea. It, that's a really good rule and, and in cattle grazing really poor quality forage we bring that way, way down even from there. Right. And I think that, that when we, let's, let's just uh, talk a little bit about urea because I think that that when we look at lick tanks, when we look at, at lick blocks and the amount of non-protein nitrogen in those, supplementing those on, on low quality forage sometimes may not be the best source. I can feed urea as long as I've fed some soluble carbohydrates with it and the amount of soluble carbohydrates we talked about will dictate how much urea I can use. And those soluble carbohydrates could come in the form of molasses, they could come in the form of, of, of corn, uh, but it's not going to be the low quality roughage. Exactly. Okay. Folks, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to stay on the topic of crude protein because we still got to get into the, the natural protein sources when we talk about rumen degradable and bypass and what that means to supplementation in cows. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us.
no matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Reinhardt. We did solve where my coffee mug went, didn't we? Yes, yeah, it was a mystery, but yeah. it's, it's resolved. It's in South Africa, and uh, uh, we had a visiting guest here from South Africa on the set, and uh, he had sticky fingers, and uh, the coffee mug went to South Africa. So, Pete, we're uh, coming after you. We're going to get our coffee mug back. But anyway, um, when we talk about uh crude protein we get back on the subject talk about crude protein we're talking about bypass versus uh rumen degradable give me some sources of protein that are high in in degradable or, or just give me the example like soybean meal and cottonseed meal they'd be about what they'd be 70 to 80 percent degradable highly available to the rumen microbes and, and, and so 20 to 30 percent of that crude protein would bypass or escape rumen digestion and wind up at the small intestine as the way it was ingested. Exactly. Now, what are some examples of more bypass? Protein in corn typically is thought of as 50 to 60 percent escape or bypass protein, as well as things like feather meal and some other protein sources, really designed to be fed so that it's not available in the rumen, but available downstream as true protein. So when we're feeding some of these byproduct feeds, we should be seeing a lot of bypass protein. Now, when you start to think about, and, and I guess the, the real reason to understand this is when we have cattle, baby calves being weaned, and they don't have a functioning rumen yet, we're looking for sources of that escape protein, correct? Uh, in some cases, yes, because we're still feeding essentially a monogastric calf. And so when we're looking at that, and I guess anything that would be fed when we don't have a rumen, functioning rumen would be bypass. But really, we're looking to feed that baby calf when we wean them uh, more of a natural protein source, a bypass protein source for improved gain. Exactly, and, and something we've talked a lot about here on the show are high-risk calves that have come in, maybe been on the road for a day or more on very maybe a little bit of low-quality forage. Their rumen is all but shut down, and we have to, for a while, think of those almost like a monogastric. So now if I say urea, uh, natural protein, or bypass, if I say one of these species, I want you to say which source you would prefer. Mama cow out on low quality roughage? Natural protein. Okay, uh, newly weaned calf? Natural protein and as well as some bypass protein. Right, and then a feedlot steer on a finished ration, lots of grain, show steer, 90% roughage. Urea number one, 
and a little bit of true protein in addition. So understanding that matching your carbohydrate source with your protein source is vitally important. It's been a great show and I appreciate you being here today. Thanks for having me on again, Doc. Folks, Dr. Chris Reinhardt. Remember, always work with your local nutritionist. I usually say veterinarian, but on this subject, work with your nutritionist and, and, and start to think about what you want to do for matching protein and, and energy. If you want to know more about what we do on Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today, folks. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.